Right then, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be fitting this intercooler onto this N54 335i. So before we get cracking on the BMW, I'm just going to have a look at the differences between our intercooler and the intercooler that the customer fetched into us. So as you can probably see, from where you are, they probably look identical, but on closer inspection, um, there are a few differences, so we'll take a look at them. Difference number one is branding. Obviously, our intercooler is branded up as dark side. Usually, they've got stencils on. Um, this will be getting a stencil before it gets fitted to the car. As you can see, this is non-branded. Difference number two is the welding quality. If you look closely at the welds on our intercooler versus this one, um, ours are a lot tighter and a lot neater than the non-branded intercooler. Difference number three is the core. So if you look closely at the fins, our intercooler core has really tightly packed fins, which is better for cooling, where if you look at the non-branded one, the fins are a lot wider apart, which is much less efficient. So the next difference on these is the end tanks. If you look inside of the end tanks, ours is tapered for better airflow, where the non-branded one is has got the adapter welded straight over the top of the casting which is not very nice so before we crack on with the install i'd just like to say this isn't a slagging match between us and another company this intercooler was supplied by a uk company we're not going to mention any names all we're saying is just be careful what you're buying because cheaper isn't always better so they're already off on the video but the first step is to take the under trays off and then remove the screws from either side of the standard intercooler once the screws are removed, disconnect the standard hose connectors from either side of the intercooler. You should then be able to just pull the intercooler out from underneath. For fitting the new intercooler, there's a plastic trim that needs removing. That'll be shown on screen now. To make things a little bit easier, we remove the screws from either side of the wheel arch liners. So I gave Rob a little bit of a hand to pull the bumper down just while he pushed the new intercooler into position. We applied a little bit of pressure on the intercooler just to push it up whilst we installed the new bolts. Just repeat for the other side. Took a little bit of force, but just pushed the standard hoses into the clip connectors. This will allow you to get the horseshoe clip around the intercooler. Repeat for the other side and reinstall the under trays. As easy as that. Right then, that's the install done. Pretty straightforward when you've got a ramp, obviously a little bit harder if you're doing it on your drive. The old intercooler can go in the bin. It's not actually a bin, that's Luke catching it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this guide interesting. If you want to see more guides, comment below. Let us know what you want to see. Apart from that, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.